All right, around the association we go. A West test last night out in Los Angeles. The Timberwolves now sitting in third in the Western Conference standings. The Clippers sitting in fourth. We were not sure when we broke down the game starting yesterday if Rudy Gobert would actually play in return to the lineup for Minnesota. He did, gave them some good minutes on the inside, but it was really Anthony Edwards leading the way for Minnesota and a dramatic comeback. The T-Wolves down by as many as 22 in the opening half. They storm all the way back. They win by 18 outright, 118-100 as a six-and-a-half-point dog in Los Angeles. You, you got to take a look at some special efforts here, too, because we were taking a look just a week and a half ago. Where were the Minnesota Timberwolves going to wind up at the end of the season without having Carl Anthony Towns? Looks like he might be back sooner than later, as they're hoping for. But we thought the Minnesota Timberwolves were like, okay, Ben, fighting for that one spot. Maybe it's a two now, yeah. maybe it's a three. Heck, can they even stay in the play and stay out of the play in rounds here? But it looks like they're a pretty good basketball team overall, even if they don't have one of their superstars, because Ant Man goes off again last night. 37 points. Yeah. He's really taking over. If there's extra shots to be had, he's taking them. 29 last night. And how about this? Coming off the bench last night, you're going to need great performances there to get some help on stars that aren't playing, like Carl Anthony Towns. How about Alexander Walker off the bench plays major minutes 28? Chipped yeah. in with 28 overall points. I love this victory, and I didn't see it coming yesterday for those Minnesota Timberwolves. I thought this was going to be a Clippers game as they were rested at home, but that's a nice win for the Timberwolves, put a little bit of distance between themselves and the Clippers, and who knows? Maybe they're still in it for that number one overall seed. Now three games of difference between Minnesota, who sits in the three spot, yeah. a half game behind both Oklahoma City and Denver. We'll show you why OKC does not hold on to first in the Western Conference by themselves in just a moment. The Clippers in that four spot, three and a half games back of the top. Again, three games between Los Angeles and Minnesota and not the result the Clippers were looking for on the floor. And they did so without Kawhi Leonard for a good majority of the game, exiting early after only 12 minutes of action. The Clippers have had promise in years past, but injuries have kept them from reaching that mountaintop and making any postseason noise. Not what you need at this point for the Clippers, who have dropped 7 of 12 since the All-Star break, only covering three times in that 12-game span. Minnesota, meanwhile, a dog in four straight, they went outright as an underdog last night. I said, look at the totals for Minnesota. Without Rudy Gobert, he was back. Game still goes over 215. The Timberwolves over in six of their last eight games. The Milwaukee Bucks in Sacramento as we go to Northern California last night. A weird line. It opened in favor of the Kings. It flipped to Milwaukee as we were breaking down the game yesterday morning. At close, the Kings close as a point favorite around minus 118 on the money line. And the market corrected itself correctly. 129-94. Sacramento wins by 35 at home against the Bucks. Impressive. And we did talk about that line yesterday on the early line saying, man, they are begging you to take the Milwaukee Bucks. This is such a great line for them. Minus one here on the road. And they got smoked in this game. You take a look at Enter the Coupo. 33 minutes in this game, scored 30 points. But here's the issue once again. Every other game, Dame, he shows up and then he just absolutely yeah. disappears. And you were expecting to get the quality from Dame over from Portland, which means what's his bad game supposed to be, Ben? Like 18 points, right? His very good games yeah. are supposed to be in the mid 20s. And when he excels, he's in the 30s you can't have this two of 12 after 33 minutes 10 total points and a minus 22 that's not going to get it done here these are the reasons we worry about the Milwaukee Bucks moving forward it's not so much they don't have the talent it's just the consistency and that consistency starts with Damian Lillard who quite frankly hasn't been consistent this entire year well maybe has been where he stinks one game plays well stinks one game plays well yeah. it's really interesting <laughs> moving forward but it hasn't worked out all that well just yet here for Milwaukee Dare I say, consistently inconsistent. At least yeah. you know what to expect from Damian Lillard. Again, as Donnie said, 10 points last night in the worst plus minus on Milwaukee, a negative 22. One of six from deep for Dame. Sacramento, not great as a favorite this year. Now just 27 and 16 straight up. Not exactly the marks you want when you're expected to win a game outright. Only 18, 23, and one against the spread. Milwaukee even worse as an underdog. The Bucks just a dog 10 times this year. But when they are booked as a dog, it might be for a reason. Two and eight straight up this season. A big return last night in Madison Square Garden to set the stage for everything we will see this week in the Big East. 
Conference Tournament. OG Ananobi, a Big Ten player from Indiana, makes his return for New York, his first game since the end of January. In January, New York went 14-2, and 14 of those games with OG Ananobi, 12-2 and with Ananobi in the lineup. They covered in all 12 victories. That was the case last night with NNLB returning for the Knickerbockers. 106-79, the victory for New York over Philadelphia for the second consecutive game in MSG. The Sixers, despite getting Tyrese Maxey back, Donnie Wright side, cannot get to the 80-point benchmark. They score 79 in both games inside the Garden. It's just that over the weekend, they held New York to only 73. Yeah, 76 are scoring in the 70s. That's not going to win very many basketball games anywhere no. against any team at any time. Maxi came, look, you thought he'd be a little bit rusty, and he was. 28 minutes, 6 of 14 from the floor. But here's are the games where you ask other guys to step up. Well, what do you want Tobias Harris to do, Donnie? I don't know, score more than two points while making like $30 million yeah. a year? Those are the guys that are supposed to be paying the freight here and stepping up in the biggest moments when your superstars aren't playing all that well or are banged up or rusty at this point. I had the over 208 in this game. That didn't work out either. It wasn't the Knicks' fault. They got the 106 and quite frankly probably scored in the yeah. 120s if the Sixers actually pushed them even a little bit nice win for the New York Knicks but this is expected for the Sixers they are just trying to keep their heads above water hoping Joel Embiid comes back in time Philly has been a dog now in 12 of their last 18 games both five and seven straight up and against the spread. If they're going to win outright as a dog, that might be the look. Jalen Brunson, 20 points. Josh Hart, also 20 points. 20, 19, and 10 in 39 minutes. Again, he will set the stage for his Villanova Wildcats today inside MSG. And I keep saying it, and I'll remind you, if Tom Thibodeau could craft a player in a lab, it would be Josh Hart. OG Ananobi, 14 points in 29 minutes. A strong return for the Knicks, and that is key to get a full picture of New York entering this home stretch. Oklahoma City and Indiana last night in OKC. The Thunder close as a five-and-a-half point home favorite against Indiana, but the Pacers, one of the best dogs in the NBA. They went outright by double digits, 121 111. They are now 20, 13, and 2 against the spread as an underdog. They have a winning record outright as a dog, Donnie. 18 and 17 for Indiana this season. Yeah, SJ got his 30, and it wasn't enough last night. That's a great win for the Pacers here on the road because we talked about the game yesterday. It was a little bit of a steep line, but you said, okay, OKC is locked in. They're looking at getting that number one overall seed. This is a game you have to win against a Pacers team that came in 500 on the road. That's a great win for the Pacers, dropping 121 points on the road. And also, how yeah. about that starting five, the balance, 18, 15, 24, 14, 18, even getting a double-digit score off the bench as well. Big win for the Pacers. Tough loss for OKC at home. Because of the defeat, Oklahoma City and Denver, now both 45 and 20. We have a two-way tie at the top for the number one seed in the Western Conference.